Yeah, this video is going to show you how to create a PHP file that will take information from a web page that's previously been created and then add it into the database. Obviously for this you need to have the MySQL Connect and the close files already made. These are shown how to it was shown how to make these in video two. So if you haven't done those already you're going to need those. Otherwise none of this will work. Obviously, as always, you need to have done all the previous videos. So we've got basic blank page. I'm going to call this one adword.php. What you'll notice is that on the interword HTML file that I made, in the form, the action was to go to adword.php. So if you call your file something different, make sure that it is actually also called the same. I'm actually going to need to rename mine because even though it is very similar, simply having a capital W in the word can actually cause it not to think. Some web servers are extremely case sensitive. Some aren't, but it's always best just to make sure that everything is perfect. Okay, so we've got our, little, our file already. And now we'll get that AdWord one back open. So now I'm ready to go. Give this a title. Adding word. Okay. Now this page we don't want it to always actually be here. So what I'm actually going to do is add some information into this page, into the meta section. So instead of the content type is HTTP. Or sorry, the HTTP equivalent. What we're going to change that to is refresh. And then the content, what we're going to do is change all this information. So what we're going to do is get it to refresh after three seconds. And then go to this URL, which will be into word.html. So that after three seconds, this page being on the screen, it'll automatically go to enter word quite a useful feature if you only want something to be on the screen for a few times or if you want to put a splash screen on a web page and all that's fine once again everything we want to show goes in the body and this entire page is going to be made out of PHP so we don't need the PHP tags now first thing we want to do is include that MySQL file obviously really important you get your spelling absolutely perfect here and remember that end of instruction has a semicolon at the end of it. Right at the end, we want to include our MySQL close file as well. Let's basically close our database connection. So all of our work with either adding things to the database, editing it, removing it, viewing things, goes in between these two include options. Otherwise, we won't be able to connect to the database. What we are now going to do is do a little if command just to check if something works. So we've got if, and everything that goes inside a set of curly brackets. I've got a little red flag here saying there's an error because I haven't put a logical condition in here. So if statements require something inside these two brackets to be something that's true false. So I could just use putting the word true and it's going to work, but we want it to dynamically adjust. We've got this option called function called is set, which basically means has a value for this being actually set. And when we actually send information using the post method, as we did this one, method was post, it sends it to the next page with this little variable in front of it called post. Remember, variables in PHP have dollar signs in front of them. And then this is an array, so we use some sort of square brackets. And then we put the name of what we're looking for. So this is what I actually called, you know, the input type word. So if I had another one called name or, you know, age, and the headline was in there, I could actually use that to get different bits of information. But I only want to check if the word has been set. And if it has, we're going to do this. So what we then want to do is basically run the connection. So I'm going to add a couple of brackets. I'm just going to slash slash means 
make a quote. So it's just a little description to make it easier to know what I'm going to do. I'm going to create another variable called connection or con. And we've got a function called my SQL ally. I think it's light. I'm not sure exactly what it means. Open bracket. And then what pops up here, you can't see it all, is the options of what it's looking for. And I'm just going to give it my variables. And what I've got is I need to give it the host first. And because I've included it from the other file, I can actually access these easily. So I'm going to get the user. Then the password. So I'm actually using all four things here. database so that basically creates a connection not a variable to store the connection at this point we haven't actually run the connection actually sorry it used to be help we've run the connection and stored it in dollar con what we're going to do is check to see if it didn't work there's a bit of error detection so it'll tell me if something is broken my spell i Yeah, no. That's another true false thing. So basically, if this is true, then an error has occurred. Now I'm going to use the echo command to print something out to the screen. And so I've got that message that's going to appear on the screen. I don't actually want that little speech mark there. And I'm going to join something together. To join strings together, we use the dot. And then I'm going to use my SQL I underscore connect underscore error. And so that will actually tell me what the error actually was. Now I'm going to make another variable for the actual SQL command I want to do. And this time it's going to be an insert command. I want to insert or add something into the database. So I want to insert it into the words table. And into the field word. If I had more than one, I want to do the word ID. Yeah, I can list them in order. But I only want one thing to do in here. I don't have to do the ID because it's set to auto increment. I just want to insert the word. Values. So this is actually what I actually want to insert, and I'm going to insert from the post. Now, because this is a string, what we note is the first time I've used double quotes, and this other point I've used the single quotes. You could use them down the other way. Just remember that if you're having a string inside another string, use the other one to what you used at the beginning. Insert the word. And close that off. Pass speech marks and a semicolon. So insert the word. This is generally where the errors go on, is because you've not got the right variable from here, or you've actually not got the right information from the database. If you always want to check it, go into MySQL. Go to your words table. right into it and you can actually see what the actual field name is. So there's a lot of hassle if you have PHP MyAdmin open at this point. So after SQL we just made the command, we haven't actually added it yet. So we're going to do an if command to actually run it and see if it works. So if exclamation mark means not SQL query set up the connection, link it to the SQL, so if that doesn't work, we're going to basically die, so it's going to terminate it with the following error message.
note once again we've used that dot notation to join things together. After we do that, we're just going to close that part of the connection. And quite thankfully, the adding information into the database has been completed.